Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss what could potentially become one of the most exciting discoveries in ocean sciences and in studies regarding the origin of life in the last few decades. A discovery that could have huge ramifications if one day deep sea mining finally takes off and starts to recover a lot of different minerals and deposits from the bottom of the oceans. But in order to understand why this discovery is so important, let's discuss a little bit of history and basically what happened back in the 1970s and 1980s. And all of this is about this. An unusual rock-like formation that goes by different names. Normally, it's known as the manganese nodule, but because it doesn't just contain manganese, it's much more often referred to as polymetallic nodule. A type of a mineral deposit that usually forms on the ocean floor and can actually be present in huge amounts in certain regions of the ocean. And depending on the location and also depending on how they were created, they will often contain different types of metals. Now manganese and iron are pretty common here, but they can also contain cobalt, nickel, copper, lithium, and basically a lot of other stuff many different mining companies today are desperately looking for because of the demand when it comes to batteries. And because these nodules mix various minerals and various metals, and are normally a size of a potato or some kind of a large egg, and also just generally lie on the seafloor and can just easily be picked up, naturally quite a lot of companies out there have been trying to find a way to exploit this and to collect them in order to obviously sell them so they can then be used for new batteries. And in the last few years, several private companies received certain rights to potentially mine them in certain locations, but nothing so far has materialized and honestly, for the reasons we'll discuss today, hopefully it never will. But I guess what's important to understand is that this is not the first time someone has been interested in mining them. As a matter of fact, back in 1970s, there was a sudden huge explosion in pretty much all countries talking about this and basically trying to find a way to extract them from the ocean floor just because you literally have this metal lying there and you just have to pick it up in order to then extract everything as long as you have a ship and a long enough hose. And based on a lot of different surveys, we know that these things are pretty much everywhere. And they don't just appear in oceans, they even appear in various lakes and are especially very frequent near hydrothermal vents or ancient locations where hydrothermal vents existed, but usually at high depths, normally around 2 to 4 kilometers. And in certain locations, there are so many of them that they literally form the seafloor. But as you can see from this picture, they also obviously serve as a really important part of biosphere. The amount of biodiversity around them seems to be really, really high. And so even in the 70s and in the 80s, there was a bit of a concern in regards to mining this, because it basically looked like we were mining a coral reef, destroying huge amounts of bioecological niches and potentially causing irreversible damage. And while surprisingly, around the early 1980s, after just a few initial attempts, this particular type of mining completely stopped. Although ironically, it wasn't a result of some kind of a realization that we're destroying the biosphere or any kind of a regulation, it was pure economics. The sudden decrease in metal prices in the late 70s, early 80s basically led to near bankruptcies for many different companies and the abandonment of these projects by 1982. And so between 1960s and 1984, something like half a billion dollars was completely lost on many of these ventures. No profits were made. And because there were certain locations where we know a lot of damage has been done, for the past four to five decades, several scientific teams have been actually trying to find out, okay, so what exactly happened there and did those areas recover? Here's actually one of the locations extremely close to the Galapagos Islands. And while you can learn about the actual details in one of the links in the description, but just to quote some of the discoveries, even 26 years later, microbial communities had only partially recovered and the full recovery could take up to 50 years. Whereas when it comes to megafauna, there was no signs of recovery even after 26 years, with only some scavengers returning to the area. With the conclusion being that mining caused a dramatic and irreversible damage to various types of life that used to exist here. But despite these conclusions, in the last, I guess, three to four years, there's been now a renewed interest just because of the need for new batteries and because of the shortage of things like lithium. And so several companies are now trying to once again harvest these unusual ocean potatoes, which led to additional studies, of course, 
including this one, that once again tried to assess potential dangers and in the process discovered something really no one expected. These, as I call them, ocean potatoes, seem to produce oxygen, and quite a lot of it, which is why those unusual locations had such a huge biodiversity. And this by itself was absolutely unexpected. And so I guess the next question is, ok, but how exactly does this work? And what exactly does this mean for our understanding of evolution of life and the origin of life on the planet? And by the way, the study for this is as always in the description below. And so here, as the scientists were trying to study this, they initially made a surprising discovery as they were measuring oxygen levels from the surface of the ocean going deeper and deeper down to the seafloor. Now normally, in these conditions, you kind of expect the oxygen levels to drop over time because there's really no photosynthesis where there's complete darkness. But to their surprise, near the bottom of the ocean, they would always discover these oxygen-rich areas. And more surprisingly, by measuring this over several years, it seemed pretty clear that around these formations, the oxygen levels were highly elevated, which kind of made no sense. And here there were several assumptions. One of them was that maybe this is some kind of an unusual organism that seems to create these habitable conditions in the depths of the oceans, or maybe, and I guess more likely, this was just a problem with measurements and some kind of a contamination. So basically maybe the equipment was not working correctly. And so several additional observations have been conducted, but the results were always the same. But this time the researchers behind the study decided to try something a little bit different. They basically collected these nodules, bringing them to the surface, and try different techniques in order to see if there's still oxygen being produced. And the answer was yes, which almost instantly led them to propose a very bizarre hypothesis. These unusual rocks were basically acting like batteries. In other words, they were producing voltage, which would then lead to electrolysis of water, producing oxygen and hydrogen as a result. And because we know that approximately 1.5 volts, or a typical AA battery is usually enough to split seawater in order to produce oxygen, this explanation potentially made sense, but it had to be confirmed by measuring the voltage of these nodules, which is exactly what was done in this study. For a single rock it was up to 0.95 volts, which though is not as high as 1.5 volts required for electrolysis, would become much higher if a lot of these rocks were touching and would thus produce a kind of a battery series. And so by clustering these nodules together, much higher voltages could be produced, thus creating natural electrolysis, with the voltage itself coming through a chemical process involving iron rust. And so these natural geobatteries seem to be responsible for a production of a lot of oxygen in the oceans. Here the scientists refer to this as dark oxygen or basically oxygen not requiring photosynthesis. And also oxygen that seems to be responsible for a lot of these ecological niches, producing tremendous biodiversity in a lot of these locations. As a matter of fact, in some locations, the biodiversity of fauna in these regions is just as high as in a typical tropical rainforest which means that mining these would lead to major environmental collapse. But I guess more importantly, by mining these and by eliminating this dark oxygen, we actually have no idea what effect this would have on the rest of the ocean life and even the rest of the planet. And so in that sense this is a really important discovery which will hopefully stop these mining plants from becoming a reality. But what about the origin of life? Well the thing about these unusual nodules is that First of all, they take a really long time to grow. A typical rock like this would actually take hundreds of millions of years. As a matter of fact, this is the slowest known geological phenomenon, where a single centimeter takes several million years to acquire. And mostly through some really complex processes involving precipitation of various metals from the seawater or really from any water above. And it's also quite likely that they already existed at least 500 million years ago, oxygenating early oceans and providing necessary environment for more complex life to evolve. And though it's still unknown exactly when they started forming, it's actually assumed to have started before aerobic life began on planet Earth, or basically before oxygen was even required. Which also suggests that life on Earth maybe didn't even need photosynthetic algae to become more complex, as an additional source of oxygen already existed in the depths of the ocean. And so because of this non-photosynthetic process that very likely existed for billions of years, we now might have to rethink how we believe complex life started on the planet and what oxygen source was dominant back in the days. And so even though great oxygenation event and the spread of photosynthetic bacteria in the oceans along with various algae was always believed to be a kind of a catalyst 
For complex life, this particular discovery suggests that maybe things were not as simple. And more importantly, it also suggests that all of this could happen elsewhere. Because this is a natural geological process that just requires water and a lot of metals dissolved in the water, for all we know, very similar conditions could exist on a lot of other objects out there and could thus even provide conditions for complex life to originate in the oceans of some other unusual world. And so in some sense, this is definitely a kind of a groundbreaking discovery, both in regards to the evolution of life and the source of early oxygen on the planet, but also in helping us understand that maybe mining any of this would be very detrimental for the entire planet. But because this is a relatively recent discovery, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos once there are additional discoveries and more clarifications. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.